Hello everyone, Ruby Ravel here. I have been a bit quiet these last few days as I was having a bit of a meltdown, as I often want to do. However, as Mercury is going to ingress Capricorn after being in Sagittarius, I thought I'd better come along and do a breakdown for you, because where would you be without my rambling wise words? <laughs> so, Mercury is, is the facet of ourselves that I'm actually struggling to deal with right now because Mercury governs how we think, how we communicate and how we interact with others on a day to day basis and just generally how we perceive the world out there and then try and translate that to the world out there and give it back. It's this feedback loop of receiving information and then trying to express, interpret that information and then express it back to the world in a meaningful way. And Mercury, according to the planets it's an aspect with, or the signs that it is transiting, affects basically the kind of the standpoint by which we approach this. So when Mercury is in Sagittarius, it's always interested in seeing the big picture, on seeing the grand designs, on unearthing those parallels and correspondences that can make sense of everything. You know, it's a bit like if you look at a painting, you can say that there's all these different details here, but ultimately the painting is reducible to the colors and shapes. And you've, if you can figure that out, then you've figured out that basically all visual art is an interplay of colors and shapes and, and lights and shade. And Sagittarius likes to do this. It likes to reduce everything to its fundamentals, because once you see those fundamentals, you can play with them in an abstract way and you can tease out the underlying cosmic laws that, that makes everything function. And you find that often that's where the parallels come in, something that applies to one art form or one science. If reduced to that abstraction can be applied to something else. And that's very exciting to the Sagittarian mind. The problem is, is that much like my <laughs> lengthy discursions right now, the Sagittarian mind isn't really interested in staying focused on one thing. It's not goal driven. Its goals tend to be large and abstract. You know, its goal is to discover truth, to be benevolent, to be righteous, to be wise, to have fun. It's not actually concerned with the real world details of how to achieve those things. And as such, our mind, when Mercury is transiting Sagittarius, tends to be very discursive, just very exploratory, just meandering, going all over the place, saying, oh, that's interesting, let's go over here, let's look at the underlying principles of that. Oh, I have an association, this makes me think of what's going on over here, and gradually it just tries to carve out more and more of the world in this way, but not, not in a very structural way, in a much more loose and expansive and grandiose way, just always trying to push back the boundaries and find those bigger connections in the hopes that just at some point there will be that euphoric eureka moment now everything just falls into place and makes sense which hopefully <laughs> is what i'm doing now probably not um and but also in that same way that when mercury is in sagittarius it also likes to speak in a way that is is grandiloquent that sounds magnificent that is fun and joyous and always trying to transmit knowledge and meaning whilst kind of simultaneously taking the piss out of itself it has this this zest to try and make life joyful, whether it feels joyful or not. Because even if you're having a shitty experience, if you can see it in the context of the bigger picture, it can often make you feel more philosophically accepting and optimistic about your position. Um, the, the problem is, like I said, it's that lack of focus and that lack of engagement with practical thinking means that with Mercury and Sagittarius, we can spend a long time contemplating things endlessly without actually any of those contemplations being reducible to some kind of real world action or manifestation. It's just remaining in that place of philosophy and hopes and dreams without actually trying to make any of them happen. Because, you know, the real world seems so petty and small and insignificant when you're out there fretting through the crowds, fretting through the clouds, as Sagittarius um, is inclined to do. 
And this is why when a planet moves from one sign into the next, it's always trying to correct the excesses of that sign. You know, if we stayed in that Sagittarian realm, we we would never really get anything done. We'd just always be leaping from that from that one next pillar of knowledge to the next. When we get to Capricorn, it's the desire idea to take all that we've learned, all that we've contemplated, all that we've thought through and teased out and realized in that period and try and bring it into the material world in some kind of structured and meaningful way. You know, Capricorn is ruled by Saturn and Saturn likes things to be definite. It likes things to be concrete. It likes things to be solid and graspable and and definable, you know, not some abstract principle, but something that has a real world means and a real world value. Um, so with Mercury moving into Capricorn, it, it's much more about getting realistic with our thinking, no longer just roaming freely, but actually trying to structure things in place and saying, you know, this is how I'm going to structure my day. These are the plans and goals that I have. Because Capricorn doesn't have those big abstract goals. It likes to give itself very realistic world goals. You know, like in a year's time, I'm going to be the CEO of this company or I'm going to start this business or I'm going to read that book or I'm going to develop that skill. It it wants to take charge of things and and make things happen in that very initiatory uh, way. But whereas Sagittarius and planets in Sagittarius like to just kind of leave everything vaguely to chance, just being like, oh, you know, if I, if I want this enough, you know, all the vague details will sort out themselves and everything will fall into place. Capricorn has a very different uh, feel about things. It doesn't believe that at all. It basically believes that unless we make something happen, it will never happen. The world would just constantly oppose us, will constantly present obstacles towards us. And therefore, Mercury and Capricorn often has this way of always always trying to foresee the obstacle and everything. If it ever has any kind of desire or undertaking, it's always thinking, what are the things that could get in the way of this? And sometimes it can get too caught up in that and say, there's too many obstacles, I'm not going to try anything, and end up being quite pessimistic. But it also, a lot of the time, can also have that drive to say, you know, I'm actually going to do things. Um, So I'm expecting once that transit actually takes place, perhaps I'll be a bit more pithy and concise in these videos from that point and actually start writing bullet points and going things in a structure, structural way. Um, But also in terms of how Mercury relates to how we speak to other people and how we interact with other people. Whereas Sagittarius likes to go out and Mercury and Sagittarius likes to go out and meet new people and have new experiences and, you know, just start big philosophical life, meaningful discussions with people they barely know and just met at the bus stop. Um, Capricorn is much more likely to associate with people if they have a sh- if they have a shared practical ambition in mind, because it always has that sense of possibly running out of time that one day I will die it wants to make sure that all of its mental time and all of its physical time is being used productively. And therefore, if it's going to come together with other people, it's because they can help serve its productive aims in some way, that they can come together and help them on a project, help them with some particular thing they need. That There's usually always an ulterior motive with Mercury and Capricorn. It doesn't just call you up and say, hey, come over because it wants to hang out. It, you know, it probably wants you to put help it move a bookcase or something um <laughs> or it wants you to sign some documents for it you know it, it's it's much more earthy way of approaching things um you know it wants to get to the point to the heart of the matter and not just ramble around things like i've been doing for the last nine minutes anyway glad to do that again after the hiatus the last few days hopefully you will enjoy this video i enjoyed <laughs> making it work to the sweat and If you have any questions or want to know more, please uh, send me a message.